do it as, um, as you would. But, and, and another thing that is coming up to at that particular event, we will also be unveiling our Alabaster 2024. <laughs> Yeah, so if you want to know, and remember girls, it's, it's for all of us. Mothers, daughters, it's, it's for all of us. If you're not a mother, you're a daughter. It's for all of us. So please do make sure um, we're kicking off uh, our Alabaster theme on that on the 25th of May. And you already know that every year, the last weekend of August, is our ladies' conference. Amen? Amen. You know that we save for tickets. Amen. Amen. We save for the pledges. We save for the merch that we wear. You can know, just get your t shirt, or you can get a t shirt with a hoodie if you like, if you're extra like me. Amen? Amen. Um, and, and if you've ever gotten any of, any of the church uh, merch, you know that the quality is good. You're going to wear that for years. Amen. And it, it's going to be a statement like your fearless. When somebody looks at you and you're wearing a fearless t shirt, you say something to somebody. Amen. Amen. Something the atmosphere has to know that the God that you serve makes you fearless. Amen. Something in the atmosphere has to know. That you serve a God who has commissioned you to arise. Amen. Amen. And so please be reminded of that and be reminded of that um, and just start saving. Amen. Amen. Because our conference is always, um, God always raises us so much during our conference. And I believe it's going to be the same in this year. Amen. Amen. Um, and as we are celebrating Mother's Day, next is going to be next week um, Sunday. That Sunday we will be appreciating all the moms and all this. And I hope that if your mom is not here, you will just call her or whatever, just to just honor her as a mom. But if, like me, your mom has gone home to be with the Lord, your mom is no longer here on earth. We are still going to do a tribute to our mothers in remembrance of our mothers. Amen. Amen. It is an annual thing that we do because um, we saw a, a, the, the year that um, the Lord gave me that vision. Um, it was it was. Um, the Lord showed me a, a gap that whenever uh, people who have lost their mothers, whenever Mother's Day is coming up, um, there's almost like a, a, a void. And the enemy wants to take advantage of that situation, of that longing for that mom. And so, God gave that vision that you did not just appear. Somebody carried you. And that mom that carried you, what we do is remember the lessons that we learned from them. Amen? And so in a short, um, in short, I would like to say by Thursday, please uh, send us the name of your mom and a picture and what the one thing that you remember your mom of. Amen? And I don't want to, us to get this confused. We are not going to be talking to our mom like Suteta Lesbian. Amen? We are going to do in remembrance of our mother. And I learned this from my mother and I will always appreciate that. So we take that time to do that. And this year we, we want to do the same for Father's Day. Amen. Amen. So this day, um, uh, this year, if you've lost your daddy, uh, he's going to do the same. And we do that every year. So if last year you, you paid tribute to your mom, you, you do it every year. Don't say last, oh, last year I did. So 
so I think maybe I can. No, you can. Amen. 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 It feels it feels a bit um, sober, but it's supposed to be a celebration. Amen. Amen. Let us go to the book of Second Corinthians chapter nine. For the offering, Second Corinthians chapter nine. I'm going to read from verse five from the end of five. From verse five. I see green is the color. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so to the audience, it's green. Um, I was at an event this past Wednesday, um, and it was green. And I come here this morning, it's green. And and I uh, thank you to Z and Sam Tyler for coming to support me. Amen. I appreciate, I appreciate, I appreciate that very, very much. Um, Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 5, it reads, That is why I thought it necessary to urge this brothers to go to you before I come and make arrangements in advance for this generous previously promised gift of yours so that we will be ready not as something exotic or run out of you. You know, like, just take time to get it out of you. But as a voluntary and generous gift. Now remember this. Now remember this. He who sows sparingly will, re will also reap sparingly. And he who sows generously, that blessings may come to others. Let me read that again. Now remember this. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows generously, that blessings may come to others. Did you hear that part? And when you sow generously, you're not just going to see for yourself, but for others as well. We'll come back to that. We're also live generously and be blessed. Let, let each one thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he had decided in his heart, not gradually or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver and delights in the one whose heart, whose heart is in his gift. And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and every blessing come in abundance to you, so that you may be, you may always, under all circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in Him, and have an abundance for every good work and act of charity. As it is written, and forever remains written, He, the benevolent and generous person, scattered abroad, He gave to the poor. His, general, his, his righteousness endures forever. Now, He who provides seed, say He provides seed. He provides seed. For sowing. That is your resources. And increase the harvest of your righteousness, which shows itself in active goodness, kindness, and love. You will be enriched in every way so that you may be generous. And this generosity administered through us is producing thanksgiving to God from those who benefit. For the ministry of this service offering is not only supplying the need, needs of the saints, God's people, but is also overflowing through many expressions of thanksgiving to God. Do you see that he mentions thanksgiving to God twice? Uh, in right there in verse 11, by the end there it says, and this generosity administered, administered through us is producing what? Thanksgiving to God from those who benefit. 
for the ministry of this service offering is not only supplying the needs of the saints or people, but is also overflowing through many expressions of thanksgiving to God. Because of this act of ministry, they will glorify God for your obedience to the gospel of, of Christ, which you confess, as well as for your generous participation in this gift, for them and for all the other believers in, in me. And they also, I long, also long for you while they pray on your behalf because of the surpassing measure of God's grace, his undeserved favor, mercy, and blessing which is revealed in you. Now, thanks be to God for his incredible gift, which is precious beyond all words. I would like to encourage you to just go through this at home by yourself. Amen? And I pray that God gives you a revelation when it comes to this giving. Because here, I believe this is Paul, is speaking about a cheerful giver. Is speaking about being purposeful and mindful about your giving, being intentional about your giving. Amen. For example, I just asked right then, sorry guys, to bless someone with a ticket. That's giving, right? When you bless someone with, let's say, that ticket, you are not only giving God thanks, but you, pro you produce thanksgiving from that person as well. So, because of your obedience, God gets the glory, God gets thanksgiving. Amen. And your giving does not only provide for you, but when you, when you receive the favor and the blessings, go to people who are around you as well. When you sow the seed that the Lord himself gave you the ability to have. Did you get that from the scripture? Or was it too long? <laughs> I, was, I was waiting to hear the pin drop. It says, um, it, it starts by saying, make arrangements in advance. That means when you come to church, you don't drink the offering and think, oh, uh, we are needed, or how much. You are intentional about your giving. And this uh, comes because you understand what giving is about. You understand what offering is about. You understand the power and the principle of giving. You understand that the Lord gives me a seed. And um, like I said before, when I was growing up, we had trees, fruit trees. Let's say it's a basic. One of them was is a basic. You plant one seed, and the tree produces what? Men. Men. Fruit. Not only do you benefit from that, but many other people will benefit from that tree that you planted and that you watered. Amen. So the seed that you plant, men get to benefit from the fruit therefore. Amen. So as the people of God, it is very imperative. That's why I said, ladies, we prepare because we know that things are coming. Uh, we have uh, the conference coming, we have this coming, so you prepare yourself to do what you need to do. At the end of the day, this is about God's glory. It's about the name of the Lord being taken to the people and the glory of God being taken to the people. Amen? Amen. And people knowing who this God is. If gospel, I I wish it was. I wish we would just come here and we didn't have to pay for nothing. We didn't have to buy anything. But for us, for we have to 
as Paul says, give, and he speaks about the generously giving. He says, he who, I forgot about <laughs> he who sows sparingly will also give sparingly. So the same measure that we use, how to handle the end, in the same manner that God will use. When he's blessing you. Amen? And when we trust God with our finances, this is one of the biggest things. As I said, I think the other Sunday that money is the only thing that God has ever equated himself, equated himself with. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God or mama. Amen? And so you have to choose. And as I said before, once again, money should serve us, not the other way around. We should not serve money, but money should do what we want it to do. Amen? Amen. Shall we have um, the offering in our hand as we pray? I encourage you to pray to the Lord to reveal to you the mysteries of giving. Amen? And the courage be able to do this word if you are not. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you just said it in your word. The seed comes from you. The ability to create wealth comes from you. And so, Father, this morning we say we do not want our source of income to hand dry. And therefore we will be faithful to you, O oh God. Because you are promising us in your word this morning that favor belongs to us. Blessings will come to us. Not just us, but those who are attached to us. And your name will be glorified, Lord, by those who receive on the other end because of our obedience. Oh, Father, I pray that each and every one, Lord, who gives this morning, that you give back to them, O oh God. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. Let us see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Let your people see, Father God, that you are truly a good God. You are a faithful God and you are a righteous God. That truly, if you say it in your word, you will establish it. <laughs> Father, show yourself faithful, Lord. And Father, we declare and decree that the enemy will not steal from us. He will not kill and he will not destroy. He will not steal the generational wealth that you want to create in your people and their families, Lord. That that will not be stolen by unbelief and disobedience. But Father God will see that the genera this generation and the one that is coming after us and the one that is coming after them will benefit from the obedience of this generation. And Father, we will break, we will break the curses, Lord, in our families when it comes to finances. We will break cycles, Lord, in our families when it comes to finances. We will break through, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we believe, as you said, Lord, last week, O oh God, that out of the church, the church will birth the pioneers, Lord, the inventors, Lord. The ones who are going to be trained blazers, Lord, will be birthed by the church. And we thank you for it, Lord. And we bless you. Father, I pray for courage, Lord. For some people, they need the courage, Lord, to trust you. The courage to trust that you will do as you promised. Because the enemy, Lord, is standing at the door reminding them of what they do not have and what they will not have. We say the devil is a liar and there is no truth in him. And he will not 
spirit from God's people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Um, the ashes can take the offering. So I want to serve the Lord. This is uh, more than anything. 
in a prayer should actually do. I would serve the Lord. I want to remind you that this was a challenge by Joshua, if you may remember, from the book of Joshua, when he led the Israelites to the promised land. Uh, it was his challenge that you guys, uh, it, uh, it's difficult to see where you are going, what is happening in your life, because people were, um, were kind of broken, or in other words, were compromising a lot. So, um, if you remember that the people were already in the promised land, the were already in where God wanted them to be, and they began to do their own thing and neglected their relationship with God. If you want to read from the book of Joshua, let's go to the book of Joshua. And he challenged them, we're going to read from chapter 24. He challenged them, if you read the whole chapter, you understand that he actually angered Joshua. That people, the very same people, if you may remember, uh, the very same people that God uh, delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians, out of the hand of those who oppressed them. He delivered them. It was not a history to them, it was something that just happened. It may not be uh, yesterday, but perhaps it was a couple of uh, to them, it was a couple of uh, years. So there were still those who remembered. I know that a lot of them died in the world that we saw. It was just over 40 years and they still remember. And who also remember was already here, those who are old enough, um, uh, how things were uh, prior to the uh, elections of 94. You still remember, eh? I know others, that's the conference and the chocolate of the year. You don't really know what was happening before that. But the Israelites knew and said, or perhaps those who were confused, our sons and daughters were right here, they don't know. And we, we, we told them the story that what was happening prior to our liberation. And um, you would assume that all the Israelites knew what was happening, what happened, where their parents were. They were in Egypt, oppressed in Egypt, there were slaves in Egypt. And God delivered them. And that's all. Joshua was, was, was reminding them that you were, we were in Egypt and God delivered us. And, um, and, 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 and Utikoet chose our father Abraham so that we may be his people and he led Moses to deliver the people you are today. And he, he reminded them that when the Egyptians pursued them, guess what happened? God came and he delivered them from, again from the hand of the Egyptians by opening the Red Sea and the Egyptians perished. Uh, in the Red Sea, and the Israelites were, were saved. I don't remember them. He reminded them that also in the wilderness, if you know what was happening in the wilderness that day, uh, they did not have food at some stage, and in the wilderness, they did not have water. A lot of things that happened in the wilderness, and God was there for them. And I know you as a child of God, there are times when you know that God has been with you, when you had nothing. There are people here who have been in the wilderness, and when you thought you're not going to make it, uh, for the month or perhaps for the year, things are falling apart. And God has been with you to come in now, and you know that. And uh, some were sick and God healed them. And some did not have perhaps jobs and God gave them the jobs. And some uh, needed some great truth and God came true for them. So, Joshua was reminding them that you guys now you seem to have Told down the servant of God, you have chosen other things to serve. And um, so if you read, let's go if you, if you are there, verse 14. If you read the whole chapter, you will see how we are reminded them. And today I want you to remember as, a, as, as the people of God, how we things so bad in your life and when you came to God, and when God came true for your life, it cannot be you have never seen God doing things, great things in your life. Amen. God's intervention in your life. You have seen God intervened in your life. And now, um, if we really say it's now, therefore, fear the Lord. You can't say, fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. When you say that, be afraid of God. You say, you know, you don't want to go and you must want to go. He is, I don't have 
Amen. No, we are to go And it says here the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. And this is the time where we are as well. When Jesus said the time will come when the people will worship God, will serve God in spirit and in truth. That means the spirit of God enable us to serve God and worship God. You cannot do that without Him. Let that be uh, something that you remember as a child of God. We cannot do, we cannot live this life without His spirit. Amen. Even the things that God demands from you, you cannot do without the spirit. Remember the Bible says that it is not by God, not by might, it is by the spirit of God. God has given us a great task, no doubt about it. But this great task, we can't do it by ourselves. Yeah. Now, he says, he says to them, serve God with sincerity mm. and in truth. Like in that is where, well, I use a pamphlet, you know, how hard would you just do your own thing? How hard you, that's religion. You know, people are religious. If you see them, uh, they are very sincere. Then you can see them, you can see these people are. But you're doing not about that, but you can see they are practically. Uh, but one of the things that are bad, um, as I said, it's in the other about it's religion, they don't go to the and they might not be that but they are not. So he stays here and put away other gods, say, put away other gods. <laughs> Let's get, I want to get this to this because other gods. Idols. And the idols are not such a person as you. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. I also want to be a baby in top for guys in the end. They get to me. It's a good thing as I look at idols. And the idols are good. What is it about idols? It's because you, you, whatever you, you are idolizing, it's so important that you take off has taken the best thing in your life. It's so important that you take off has taken the best thing in your life. It's not that something like, well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't go and uh, offer sacrifices. Africa Jews used to offer sacrifices to ancestors. Uh, by the way, we love our ancestors, but they cannot hear us. They cannot. They are not demons, by the way. They, it's just that they are dead. And we will get them. And they won't be able to hear us. So they are not the demons who love them, but they cannot hear us. So you may say, I don't, Pastor, I don't offer. Sacrifice to the ancestors, I will do that. But now let's ask you first of all, what is that that's so important in your life? That you prioritize more than anything. That is something that you worship, it's something that you serve. Uh, it's a new thing we will not mention those things, maybe uh, in the future we will mention the potential idols that you may have as a child of God. It may be your job, your job can be an idol. Your business can be an idol, eh? Amen. And the Bible, and then the Bible is clear on this. It says these are the other things. Amen. Amen. These are the other things. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and all other things. So all this place. And the Bible says, God knows that you want these things, you desire these things. And it says all these other things shall be added. Now, that is the God, what is the God? It's okay, it's easy, it's fast, it's just like the game we get and we put God uh, on the back seat, then it becomes a problem. And if we have not learned, kind of through this photo, uh, it is happening, it has happened already. In the book of Judges, if you go through the book of Judges, you will see when the Israelites did that. But who took us the last year? Similarity. It was, it was it, who were the sin for God everything that is happening in our lives and the security that we have and everything that is happening is because God is with us. Amen. If we should look at the throwing his services, that sometimes seems seem insignificant because as a self it, you will see what will happen to you. So he's saying to them, it seems as if you forget me, but I'm saying there was a you know. Uh, Yes, I got some bad balance. I'm sure you know a friend or two who bought a lot of bad things and they forget about that. They forget about you. They don't even call you. Say thank you. 
Amen. We, we are like that to God. And I don't want us to be like that to God. Um, since the particular class is a and the particular class is a city with one person. I'm not sure if you know the phrase with one person. We say, Thank you, you're happy. I'm running away, you'll never see me. That's what people uh, do, and that's what sometimes we do to God. We come to Him with our trust in the Israelites, if you know even from the book of Genesis. God delivered them from the Egyptians because they were crying to God that, Lord, this is unbearable. The, the, the burden, the slavery is unbearable. Please help us deliver us from the hands of the Egyptians. It was their prayer. What is your prayer as a child of God? I know that you may have a prayer, you may have a prayer acting, you may be asking God for something. And I pray that when God helps you and when God delivers you, you don't run away and say, Oh, we don't need to go. So I'm going to smell like that. That's the way. That way. You know, we often have a lot of time. Don't you have friends like that? I do. They call you when they're in trouble and you even forget about them. And then they go to the game when they're in trouble. They don't have any trouble session. They don't call you and hear, How are you doing? How are the kids? How is it at work? Is that the thing, Frank? Can I come? Please, if you can take you for coffee. No, they don't do that. They call you when they're in trouble. Amen. And I, I and as a child of God, if 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 uh it's not only you, it's not only you father particular and you are They just come to him when they're in trouble. Yes, he's saying that uh, when you are in trouble, come to me. I will tell you, but he says, if we're in front of the book of Psalms, chapter 51, he says that when you find yourself in trouble, come to me, and I will deliver you, and you will do what? You will serve me. You will continue to worship me. Oh, God, but then you, know, you come back again. Uh, you won't find the Chico Johnson's answer, because the Chico Johnson's So here, this, uh, Joshua is telling these guys, that's this one's this is what God has done for you. And he says, put away these other gods which your father served on the other side of uh, the river. If you talk about the other side of the river, when they did not have any other thing in was when they were in wilderness, remember the other side of the river is when they were in wilderness. They, and then the other side is when they were in the promised land where they couldn't so where they couldn't prosper. They could not prosper, they could depend on God. It happens. As well as a child of God, you remember when you depend on God every month, every month for your um, for your sustenance, for your rent, you know, uh, even from month to month, it happens that they're living from month to month. You're not the first person to be there. They were living from month to month. There is a divine and then they don't know who to ask for tea because the man was for that tea. Even that like it's your right side. So they were living from month to month on the other side of Shabbat and the wilderness. Um, and on the other side, they were able to, so they were able to build the planet houses. God gave them, even the houses that they did not build. Uh, they had everything going. So on the other side of Shabbat, these guys still, they worshipped God. They tried to do other things because they were so good about it. It was just on the side where they were prospering. But from a lot of people, and then they perhaps told themselves that we are fine without God, we are self-sufficient here. And, 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 and I feel to people and better than you know. I can make money, my business is making profit. It happens that people here uh, who can say that I was, I was even struggling to hear it. Now there is no more an issue. Are there people who are like that here? Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that we have a lot. Um, mm -hmm. In my life, I'm no more. I don't go around and knock. And I told you that everybody just went, I just put the fuel in my car. I don't even feel it. My wallet doesn't feel that. Mm -hmm. That's the other side of the river. Hallelujah. That's the other side of the river. Where God promises, why don't you go for that? Amen. Amen. Then they are going to hear that 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 they are going to hear but you won't go through any time when you have to learn 
where you don't have anything, where you will depend on my sustenance, I will give you what you want. You won't tire there. Sometimes you felt like you are tired, but you won't tire there. Mm-hmm. You felt like things are not that you want as long as you still have the process of listening to God and cross over to the side to trust the second. So this guy is here. As this guy who are in the wilderness now, we're talking about the people who are on the other side of the river, that is, that is uh, the, the land of milk and honey. They had everything. They had their mother houses. As a matter of fact, God warned them in the book of John uh, chapter 8, where he says, when you have built your houses, when you have tiny houses, when you have your nice things, do not say to yourself that it is my hand, it is my ability. So he was warning them that I suppose they have a hand with you, please. Don't get to the point where you say it is my ability. So now we will read uh, verse 15. Let's go to verse 15. And he's telling them that you guys are so shaky. Have you seen that was shaky? And if not that only he was so on fire for God and well they were students, you know, the students sometimes they are so on fire for God. Um, and they are and people who do have, they are so on fire for God because they want something from God. They, they want something from God. The moment they find that, you know, a lot of somebody, when they make action, when they show us, they say to you, know, come with me, my As I mentioned, I will take you some lessons. That's what I'm saying. 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 And see a humble, see the nation of the people. This is the ability of the Italian and all of that. No, it's the one. For the other thing, for the other thing, it's the one. But it's the one that was not the one. Let's be sincere. Now, Joshua is saying, be sincere in serving God, serve God with your own heart and be sincere. And he's saying to these people, this is why it's going to happen when I'm challenging you. And if we read from verse 15, let's read verse 15. And he says, but I, but if you, if serving God seems undesirable to you, but uh, undesirable, or you don't have time, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors or the God that you left beyond uh, the river, or the gods of Amorites, the gods of Tikal, you know, Amas Ne, Emilio Tiko, Emilio Tiko, Emilio Tiko, Emilio Tiko, Amas Ne, Emilio Tiko, Emilio Tiko, Emilio Tiko, Emilio Tiko, Emilio Tiko, And we, he has drunk Tiko, and this is just with the Tiko, Amas Ne, when you're moving, uh, wherever you come from, and you come to, to, to Cape Town, you drunk Tiko, Emilio Tiko, Emilio Tiko, Emilio Tiko, Emilio Tiko, this is my name, you know, and to you, it's so important that, uh, so, and he said uh, to them, uh, and he said, but as for me and my house, in the name of the Sister Uncle Zanti, he said, I will be going to do it. Sister Uncle Zanti, for instance, in the game, he said, I'm going to do it because she did not have. Oh, now that we have, we serve each other because it is the right thing to do because we are created to serve God. We are created to worship Him. We are His hand work. He says, hey, it's not just like we go to school and it's a separate But this is a challenge that Joshua gave to his, gave to, to, the, to the people. And this challenge, uh, I believe they took it very importantly because this is what we go to do. We go to serve God. Let's understand. Who tell me about they just decide not to serve God? Not limited to what I'm telling you, but uh, there are other things as a person who are serving to you. First of all, is to think that you are self sufficient. That's what they thought. But the light, I'm self sufficient. I can do, I'm able to pay. I'm able to do that. I'm able to pay to put fuel. And uh, now um, I'm able to go out and eat. You know, it happens to all of us as well. There were times when we were not able to go out and eat. And we're wondering what we are going to eat or wondering what we are going to wear. But now, each choice is a good. 
we live in abundance. There are people who are living in abundance. That's what God has promised. So, uh, if we read from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, this also again, uh, it's happening in this village where people feel like they have everything and they become the local how we go to church. Uh, oh, by the way, it's time to go to church. Oh, Flega stand us in the law. Flega I detail. I need to speak to God and God about it. We just forget about God. This one is something that was happening with this church. And the church these days. You know, um, John wrote to seven churches. In fact, um, that's a good uh, uh, reading, if you read through that, this is exactly what is happening in the church. You will see that in the church there's lots of localness. About to say, I will ask the Baba, who put a gun to me, and the guy, I'm not going to ask the Baba, I'm not going to ask the Baba, sitting in the two for seven, you guys are sometimes on the right, and then sometimes it's a very true book that you can put a gun to me. He's going or not going. And the Lord may have been just a bit too much. And how can we do this? We know the habit. Amen. God already says that I know your words, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish, oh, yes, I could wish that you were not to go to Chuchi. Would it? It has a rubber strap. We, the kids, we have a rubber strap. Okay, we, I just put it in. Sense it now. The sun is starting to get the chest. Who can do that? Who can do that? Person, we pray to the priest that the priest will take the hand to the rescue. Who can who can do that? 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 Who can Amen. Now he says that I want to teach you So then, because you are not one, and neither call it no heart, I will vomit you out of my mouth. According to if you do as a child of God, if we have got a friend who is like this, you don't know what is happening with this friend. I'm not trying to do what I can do. And then those who do that, I don't care that now. And then you don't know what to do. So it's not the friend to keep. You don't keep a friend like that. He's expected to be. And then suddenly, I forget that now, suddenly you're broken. I can't be broken. You don't like it. You don't want a person like that. I can't. Free of that. So, uh, and, and, and here, here is a problem. The, the reason why they were like this is because uh, they were like this. It's because they thought we are self sufficient. And Chico and Chico mentioned in one of the churches, in, in one of the letters, which one that you think you don't need, you have no need of me because you are rich and wealthy. So uh, when you are rich and have the lot of wealth, so it means that you have no need of God. And Chico, but one thing that is hidden from you is that you are so poor without you. You are so poor and miserable without you. So, sometimes when you feel like you're self-sufficient, you have everything, you, 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 you feel like a country, a country, you don't have a value, 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 from smoothie business, and you have a value, and everything, you have a value, and you have a value, and I said, I said, we'll be back, we'll be in the middle, we'll be in the middle, and the guy is shooting back, and the need to change the business. And then when we follow you and ask you, hey, I was first in town, and you know, no coming to church, and you tell us a lot of things, no, I'm busy. Can you hear that? I'm not going to do that. If you can hold stand, you don't even come to the hold stand, because you have no need of your, this is what you're talking about, these guys. They will become, one thing, ask us for truths, and they disappear. Pass the body as to taste and hope. When they are occupied, they have everything going on in their lives, they disappear. We have in it that it was a when you come to God, we still need God for everything. Yeah, yeah our must have to talk because they are in need. When they need deliverance, when something happens in their lives, when um, 
things are, are, are not going okay in their lives. That's what they think they do it. You know, um, there's a clip that I like from one of the preachers from, um, I think it's from Singapore, and he was telling his population that um, there are people, he was, speaking, he was speaking about a specific person who was so busy for God and had a lot of as you know, I was saying, I'm going to go to And he had lots, he had private jets and had everything. And one thing that the Naka says, you know, who's a talent? No, 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 he was busy with running his business with whatever he's doing. And suddenly he got sick, he got diagnosed with terminal disease. And then suddenly he's got time for God. Who's a talent every Sunday? And he wants to come to have a hope set. But when you have to make prayer, he's there. Can you see? But sometimes you run away from God, and when you are in trouble, you want to come back. And we know one thing about God, which he knows. Because sometimes you think, which God for that is what he always allow you to come back. And God has always allowed you to come back. But there is a, a, a scripture in the Bible where God is saying, I will be loyal to you if you are loyal to me. He may allow you to come back, and, but you need to come and do what you're supposed to do. You need to come and serve Him. Uh, I know that sometimes people say, I'm telling you, by being eating for it, I believe it's a book of Galatians, the very last chapter. It says that whatever I may sow, He shall also reap. Mm -hmm. So it's about eating as what to do for this to eat. You come and you have not sown, and if you want to reap, God is saying, I will be loyal to you. And if you read from the book of Jerome, chapter 28, talks about the blessing of obedience. And you, you have not obeyed God, you have not served God, but you want the blessing yeah. of heaven, obeyed God. But you have not <coughs> done so. With the help of God, we have to do what you have to do, and the results will come. We know that the salvation when God saves you initially as his child, it is true. But all other things will be what you sow and you will reap what you sow. You run to God, so when we are in need, you run to God. And you see that again, these guys who run away from God right now, they do the thing that you can't wish it. I think I've been in trouble so fast. Send a clear eye to me, it's up and but he disappeared. Now again, I want us to, to read from the book of Judges chapter 6. This is what is happening with the Israelites. The Israelites were exactly like that in the book of Judges. They will go to God and they will have every other thing, uh, every other thing going on in their lives. When things are going down, they run to God. It says, if we read from chapter 6, verse 6, so Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. So, what is happening when you begin to put God in the bad seat? He's really in the bad seat. Okay. And everything will come for you. And you take all yourself. And He's waiting for you to save yourself. Because you think that you are okay without Him. And the trouble will begin to come into your life. And when it comes into your life, Crisis and you are going up. You have yourself to be that. What is happening with the Israelites say? If you take the whole story here, you will see that um, if you read from the very first chapter of the book of Judges, it says that the Israelites began to serve other gods. When they were in the promised land, they were on the other side of Jordan and uh, where they could prosper. And they began to serve other gods. And it says that Jacob was very angry with them. And, he, and the Bible says that Jacob was removed. His service was so stuck in protection here. And we're going to move his protection. And we know that all the enemies, the Midianites, are waiting. And I can tell you the chapter of what if you think you are safe, there are Midianites and Amorites, and uh, if you read from the Bible, and Hittites and Philistines are waiting. Mm -hmm. But we keep protection from you when you do not serve him, when you are not faithful to him. When your heart is not in him or your heart is away from God, then he will see trouble will come. Now it says Israel was great in courage because the Midianites and the children of Israel cried out to God. But you know, 
the best thing people can do that they can do that to that. We are okay without God. We do well without God. Let's understand one thing about God. God, I got from the kitchen plan as a mom says, do the body. Mom says, do the body. Amen. And if you don't know what she was like, we will have to go up and tell her that we will have to Let's be like that for the answer. Who understood that? That is it's bad out there without God. And he had a first hand experience that if I go up, 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 up away from God, this is what is going to happen to me. I may have friends, I may have people who come to celebrate with me. But the moment things go bad for me, everybody will leave me. I will be by myself. So I believe that that's learn that lesson. And secondly, the, the Israelites did not learn that lesson because it's already here, which he called raised judges to bring them back to him, to drive out the enemies. Enemies in God, the land was back on. Those enemies were driven by God, raised the judges. And I believe that God is doing that for our nation to be raising you as, as a judge in your street, raising you as a man who will bring the word of God, who will bring people back to God. Um, Utiko is for the relationship. That's why he said to the Israelites, I want you to be my people yeah. and I will be your God. Yeah. That's the relationship. I will be your God and you will be my people. That's the relationship. That means Utiko, Utiko, that's why I don't that, you know. It's like my children, I am their parents and they are my children. I'm not a child. I have the authority to use that. I that. And also stay at the team. So, we be careful what we say to God. <coughs> and we need God. And by the way, my children need to be, uh, as I said, I don't know, uh, of course, they are teenagers, and I'm like 18, but I can tell you, uh, I can do without them, but they can't do without you. Amen. Amen. But I can do without them. God can do without you. But if you go back to the other gates, who are about to know what they're talking about? So the Israelites did not get that. Who are about to pass me that up? It's not my God. Who are about to come to? And then David even said that God is in heaven and God on earth. You can see heaven and earth. Who are about to pass you? Can you find your person? No. Who are about to pass you? Has a better view <laughs> than you, and who opens the who pays for it, who partners love so much to feel that person, but I can feel that over here. Who are going to eat it, eat it, feel that person, they like to feel that person. So, God is in heaven, that's what David said. God is in heaven. Be mindful of what you are saying because God is in heaven, and God is God, and you are just a human being. So, God wants a relationship. He wants a relationship. I have found in my Bible says that when it when it's so grand, oh, I will be afraid for those. I will be afraid for those around you. The look of one, those who think that they have everything, but they have nothing without God, because the very thing that they have is because of God. Remember, God said to the Israelites, "It is I who gives you ability. Mm. It is I. I don't have to have ability." It is I who gives you ability right. to create wealth, to buy the car that you have. I know you may be saying, I am the descendant of the man over time. I understand that. <laughs> it's God who it the made it possible for you to be there in the first place and be able to work so that you can have what you have. That's right. Amen. Amen. It is He who gives us ability to create wealth, but He What's the relationship? I will be your God and you will be my people. I will be your God and you will be my people. We know from the book of John, we, when I shall read the scripture last, last uh, week, that who did not abide in me and I in you in the book of John, chapter 15. Abide in me and you in me, and, and abide in me and I in you. And it says that a branch cannot live on itself. Yeah. It cannot live. Take yourself as a branch that you cannot live without God. You cannot live without God. If the branch is cut out, it's a matter of time until it's really at the time. 
each with us and die without God. You are the friends, and it says, unless you abide in me, you will not be able to produce it. It says, if you abide in me, you will be fruitful. Mm. Our fruitfulness is connected to God. He is the source, and He is the source in this relationship. In this relationship with others, we are the one who benefits from this relationship. Mm. So He is the source. If we are cut off from the source, we are not able to do anything. We are here to serve God. Which it was a result that we even did. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. John said, Though you stay in me, but I will end up in Washington. I will not run away from you. I will worship you. We will learn from, again, we will learn from Paul who was in prison. Think about it. He was in prison serving God. And then Mount Tatum, they arrested him and he was in prison. In prison, I can't feel like that. I took care of us, then I took care of us, and I took care of us. As a matter of fact, the letters that you are reading, he wrote them in prison. And he reached your people. And he, and he took it, you know, sometimes it's not as if you have a positive account, because you know that the end will be better. And he said, I am denied about it. I was not supposed to be that was. But kept him going back. I am the prisoner of the Lord. Yeah. He took out of being the prisoner of the Lord. And he wrote the letters to the Romans, to the Corinthians, and to the Philippines, to everybody, encouraging them, not complaining that he knew I'm here, he was a what? Zaron he was encouraging them. And if he goes to a look, I was telling them, don't look at these guys. Serve God, serve God. And he was telling the Galatians that what has happened with you, you are running so well, but now what is happening with you? So he was encouraging people in prison. Think about you. You put in prison because of serving God, who is our so stressed, the power to trust. We are the owner of the baby because we serve God wherever we are. We serve God, and 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 we God. Amen. We take on Siva of your school here. No matter has to make it because he has given us everything. No that he won't give you anything because he has promised that on the other side of Jordan. I don't want you to get them, to get that you won't have anything. Because he promised that on the other side of the river, you will prosper. You will do better. You will do better. Now, uh, if you read uh, 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 when we read from the book of um, chapter 16, in fact, verse 16, the verse in the chapter, and it says, uh, I will pray, this is, this is uh, Jesus talking to, to the people. We say, God is a God of relationship, and this thing is about to you. And now, Jesus, uh, chapter 14, the book of John, chapter 14, verse 16, and it says, But I will pray to the Father, and He will give you another comfort. He will give you another comfort. He is another comforter is in us, another helper, in fact, another helper. But so that we cannot do without this help. We will do it. Class of our way, Spagotet, and the Mutet, to Napa, we are with you. Which he will give you another helper, and he will abide with you forever. Say forever. And he says, that helper will abide with you forever. He will abide with you forever. He will abide with you forever. As you are closing, um, why she can come, he will abide with you forever. And I actually put a man for a shell. He will abide with you forever because this is a relationship that we have with God. And when he abides with you forever, think about what God does in your life, what the Spirit do in your life. The Spirit gives life. The Bible says that the Spirit of God, that is in you, will give your body, your mortal body, your body that is full of fullness. We are in peace. Who are not going to go and eat it? He is living inside of you. He will heal your body. I also need that the power of God will tell us about our effort because the power of God will tell us about our effort. Sometimes when you read that cancer, because the one who 
se viu que isso é o caso da vida, você vai precisar de hero direct you to the will of God or he will lead you in all truth because he lives in the inside of you. If you abide in him, we will be able to live the life that is the life that Jesus promised in the book of John chapter 10, 10. That I have come, that you may have life. He is a life giver. And let's say if we for it, uh, that's why I'm closing. If we read from the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 34, verse 15, it says, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The eyes of the Lord. When I don't smoke to you, my love, away from the soil. Jesus said, You are trying to move to away from me, Lord. You are not was Fumana. Amanda was Fumana Ugo. That came as a revelation to him that Uti was Fumana Ugo. We are coming here as well. And since I'm a Ugo, since I'm a Jesse, so we don't go for entertainment. I know. You know, I see a lot of entertainment being uh, in the status of the internet church. The things that are supposed to be giving people life, giving <coughs> people to God, but there is so much entertainment. Amen. I've never seen a man, especially here in South Africa, that you go to church so that somebody can tell you who can live with you. What is in your feet? What is in your wardrobe? Who cares what is in your wardrobe? What is in this for you? Eh? But, but, but the spirit gives life. When you come in the Bible says that when you come and gather in my name, I am in your midst. Amen. So he is the center, not anyone, but he is the center of everything. When we come here, we come to him. We make him the center of our lives. So as we are closing, the guys who are sitting, you guys who can come, as we're gonna take some time to pray. God is, God is good. God is good. Amen. And He wants us to go back to Him. Amen. And we'll do it back. Because He's going to the inside of us. See, this is just the beginning of the two great things. I want us to, to look at to look at the first word to take what is in the inside of us. Everything that you do. Salienza, because the Spirit of God empowers us as we begin to judge the city, as we begin to judge our strengths, as we begin to be the judges like Gideon, in our white place, we will see God doing greater things. Amen. As we read the last, the, the very last part of the scripture today, let's go to the book of Second Chronicles.
I'm going to pray for that to become this. That's the title of the Saturday. That they can make the decision and choose the God that they will understand as 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 we are closer. Go on. Thank you. 